to the wire in the special session. It is over, but what is ahead for our state? Joining us now for the first time in the studio in his new position. That's right, Commissioner Administration. Jay Dart, good to see you, sir. How are you? Good morning. Doing well, thank you. Nice yeah. to see you all. Well, you nice to see you. And again, uh, early, an early arrival, uh, but you know, I guess over the last number of months, one regular session, two special sessions, burning the wick at both ends, lawmakers have been. As you sit back now and look at what was accomplished, the opinions from you. Well, it was a difficult time for everybody. The governor didn't want to come in and start raising taxes right off the bat. Legislators didn't get elected saying, let me go in and raise your taxes. Yeah. But the reality sunk in, I believe, for everybody. We, we had a $2 billion shortfall going into this regular session, uh, cut shorter a little bit by revenue estimates. But, uh, you know, a lot of money had to be raised, and it was well over a billion dollars raised to, to try and make sure we can continue service just as we have it. We're not talking about expanding government. We're not building inflation raises into this budget. Uh, so it was a big challenge for everybody, and we still wind up about $300 million short of what we needed to, to stay where we were. Uh, that has to be frustrating for you and, and everyone involved, but what mainly frustrated you coming out of this last special session as we approached midnight, still wasn't over. Uh, what was frustrating you the most? Well, it was a difficult time for everybody. People had a learning curve, a lot of new legislation walking right into this storm. Uh, and that was frustrating for everybody and, and trying to come to grips with the reality and convince legislators that this is real, that this is not made up, that's not phony numbers, some false accusations made about the governor just trying to create this crisis, which is ridiculous. Everybody agreed that we had this, these real number problems and nobody came up with any other alternatives on how to cut the budget more. We had already cut the budget going in. We continue to look at ways to uh, reduce the size of the budget, but uh, the reality is we have to continue doing what government's been doing and providing education, health care services, and what have you. So it was a frustrating time for everybody, and we still have challenges with a, a $300 million shortfall, and uh, unfortunately the potential for a $200 million shortfall in the budget year that ends this week. The new fiscal year begins July 1, and the early indications are we may even have a shortfall in revenue from this year because corporate sales taxes are so slow, sales tax increases have not been what we thought they would be after some of the increases that came uh, earlier in the session. Um, and we're just going to have to deal with that if, uh, if it presents itself. Well, that leads itself right into the next question. We're up off the floor, but we are a long way from uh, truly, truly healthy here. You just mentioned it. One fiscal session, got two days left, another one begins on Friday. Already looking ahead to the next one, I know you guys are. We got a long way to go. Well, we do. The, the mission here was to stabilize the budget. We, this budget was Kinda so erratic one. and so, so much in the red. Uh, we've been, the general administration had been using one-time money and fund sweeps to balance the budget, not recurring dollars that were coming in year after year after year. There are no one-time monies. There are no fund sweeps in this budget. This is reality and based solely on recurring revenue that the Revenue Estimating Conference says we're going to get. So uh, that's a change for everybody because there's been this illusion that we've had a, a truly balanced budget based on recurring revenues, and that simply has not been the case. It's going to be the case from now on. We've said we're not going to play these games, and so people are going to be dealing with the reality. Uh, we're going to be asking agencies at, at the beginning of this fiscal year uh, to basically hold 5% in reserves, not a cut. It's basically saying like a savings account, put this away in case later in the year we have to have mid-year budget cuts. We hope we won't. But if we do, we want to make sure that agencies are preparing for that and not having to balance their budget based upon only six months left in a year instead of a full year. So it's a precautionary measure. We think it's a conservative and responsible measure to take from a budgeting standpoint. It's Conversations that need to be yeah. happening now so people aren't blindsided. Just to be prepared. And if the right. good news is if we don't have that deficit, then all's fine. You continue to spend the budget as allocated. And uh, we hope actually to have a surplus. That, that's what you'd like to have, sure, a bit of a surplus at the end of a year instead of having a deficit and having to make mid-year cuts. It's all based upon revenue estimates and if they're going to actually come true. And, and there, it's, an, it's an art. It's not a science. Dealing with real money. No more, uh, no more uh, talking about monopoly money because uh, can't do much with it. Jay Darden, good to see you this morning. Appreciate yeah, a lot of work done and still a lot more to do.